Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. On Wednesday, the 2nd of June, 28.3 Celsius was recorded at Norfolk in West London. That made it the warmest day of the year so far, but is it likely to be beaten during the next couple of weeks? I think the answer to that is yes, quite possibly, but not certainly. I'm going to begin by uh, running a sequence using data from the Canadian model. It starts at 12 GMT on Saturday the 5th. Initially, there are a few showers in the west, but it's a mainly dry picture. Through the coming days, that shower risk does continue, but I think there will be a good deal of dry weather around too. Things become more uncertain during the middle part of next week. An Atlantic influence returns certainly across the north, and you can see here outbreaks of rain affecting northern and western parts of the country. But there is uncertainty about whether that will extend down into southern and central counties. Certainly on this particular sequence from a Canadian model, there isn't really much rain at all in the south, and the southeast stays completely dry. Later on through next week, high pressure once again builds from the southwest, and by the end of the sequence on Saturday, the 12th of June, it becomes a dominant feature of the UK's weather, with the Atlantic influence really just uh, confined to the far north by then, mainly dry and becoming quite warm if it's correct. Just to uh, compare that to the GFS model, this particular chart's for 15 GMT on Wednesday, the 9th, when that Atlantic influence is returning. GFS is making a bigger deal out of rain. You can see there are some very heavy outbreaks being forecast in the far northwest. And the risk of rain is affecting much of uh, the northern half of the UK, but it's also extended down into Wales and parts of central England. Although even on this particular sea, on, on this particular chart, it stays dry in the southeast and east Anglia. So probably not a great deal of rain, even if the in the south, even if the GFS is correct. Just to show the jet stream profile associated with the GFS chart. So here we can see it's it's making a sort of beeline towards the UK here um, across Northern Ireland, and that's really showing why there is this potential for um, more changeable, more, more of an Atlantic influence through the middle part of a week. By Friday the 11th, jet stream is pretty strong, but it has moved northwards and virtually the whole of the UK by then is sitting on its warm southern side. So the more settled conditions returning uh, northwards. Just to show the air mass profile, initially, mainly greens across the UK, uh, some light yellows, light yellow, light greens across the southern part of the country. So that's where the warmest air is currently. But move forwards to Friday the 11th, virtually the whole country now is under yellow and orange shading. That's showing warm or even very warm air for the time of the year. Just for far north, there's some green shading here where the Atlantic influence remains. But but it's certainly pointing towards an increase in temperatures at the upper level. If we see what that means for us down at the surface, this is at uh, 15 GMT Saturday the 5th of June. Temperatures widely in the southern half of the UK between 20 and 22 Celsius, maybe even a degree or two higher. In the north, it's between 18 and 20. So pleasantly warm. Jump forwards to Friday the 11th as that upper air um, mass profile, it begins to warm up. We can see then temperatures in the London area being shown to be uh, 26 Celsius. Add a couple of degrees onto those raw values and we're up to 28, pretty much what Norfolk saw on Wednesday the 2nd. So already by Friday the 11th, we could be challenging for the warmest day of the year if the GFS is correct. In terms of rainfall, days 0 to 5 are shown by the chart on the left and days 0 to 10 on the right. These, these are both generated from the GFS 00Z model, so they are snapshots rather than ensemble data. The takeouts here are days 0 to 5. It's dry in uh, southern and central parts of England. There's more rain in the north and the west with between 10 and 20 millimetres. So it's not particularly wet by any means, but it's, it's showing 
greater risk of showers and possibly more of an Atlantic influence. Days, five, uh, days 0 to 10 on the right hand side, the big difference here really is in the far northwest of the UK where values have increased significantly and they're between about 30 and 50 millimetres. So much of that rain is being forecast to fall between days 5 and 10. Elsewhere there is, there is a little bit more rain which has fallen according to this but not a great deal at all. So all in all not particularly wet apart from in the northwest. How do the other deterministic models stack up against the uh, GFS and the Canadian? This chart's from the uh, UK Met Office model and it's valid for Friday the 11th of June. It's quite interesting because what it's showing is low pressure to the north there having more of an influence. It's, it's certainly, we do have high pressure beginning to build from the southwest, but it hasn't, it, it's not as influential as it was on the GFS and the Canadian models. So this is pointing towards a possibility of more showery conditions lasting through the second half of next week, particularly in the north. I'll next show the ECM uh, deterministic model chart at 10 days ahead, so jumping forward to Tuesday the 15th of June. This one's quite interesting. High pressure there over the UK and the air mass is very warm. It was warmer than most runs in the uh, ensemble, so that means it may well it may well turn out not to be correct because most of the other runs are, sh are showing something slightly different. Nonetheless, it's, it's, if it is correct, there is a potential for it to turn very warm or even hot. This is shown 850 HPA temperatures, so air mass temperatures on Tuesday the 15th of June. Again, it's from the same ECM run. And we can see across the UK, they're between about 10 Celsius at the lowest up to about 14 Celsius. It's close to suggesting uh, temperatures down at the surface of 30 Celsius being a possibility. So it's certainly not out of a question with this air mass profile. If there's enough sunshine around and it's calm, could well see temperatures challenging 30 Celsius if it's correct on Tuesday the 15th of June. The Canadian model at the same time also shows a very warm air mass. We can see high, uh, low pressure to the northwest may be stirring things up a little bit, but generally it's a high pressure dominated scene. And the air mass temperatures here are very similar to those which the ECM was showing, essentially around 14 Celsius in parts of the south, a little bit cooler as you head further north. Again, they are suggesting that 30 Celsius could be under threat. Now, just as a little detail, one of the questions which is often asked is how accurate are the different computer models? Which ones are best? Which ones are worst? Etc. Etc. I've brought up this chart because it shows verification statistics which are provided by NCEP in the United States. It's verifying a number of the computer models at five days ahead. The key things to note here are, the, so well for the GFS it's showing 0.875 and the closer that number is to one, the more accurate the particular model is at when, when it was evaluated. The, these numbers are updated every day but they are relatively stable. So what we see is GFS at 0.875, the ECM 0.9, the CMC which is the Canadian model is at 0.881. The FNO, which is a model I don't generally use, is lower. And the UK Met Office model is also at 0.881, so the same as the Canadian. On this, on this particular chart, it's suggesting that the ECM model, the European, is the most accurate. And that is usually the case on these verification charts. It's, it's once or occasionally you'll see the GFS of the UK met leapfrogging ahead of the ECM, but it is unusual. It's normally the European model which comes out tops. Now, having said that, it's important to understand that these differences are not huge at all. There isn't really a great deal of difference. They're all pretty accurate. This is, as I say, at five days ahead, but, but generally the ECM does edge it. So they're all, they're all pretty good now, but it is just worth keeping an eye on these. 
On to the ensemble data. So the GEFS, the ensemble data was not being evaluated because the evaluation chart was for the deterministic models. The ensembles are what are used to generate really the probabilities of different outcomes. And here is the 16-day uh, plot for London. The top half shows the upper air profile. The thing to note really is that it starts off close to or a little bit above average and then it climbs and it becomes warm or even very warm for a period of time. Most of the runs in the ensemble are showing that pattern. There are one or two which are dipping below a 30 year average and that number increases after the middle part of a month. But even then, most are staying above that 30 year average mark. In terms of rainfall, well, across the bottom, there are a few spikes there, but not, not really many. So the possibility is some rain, but often dry through the next 16 days. Jumping up to uh, Glasgow, the comparable chart, again, on the top half there, the air mass profile, it's above average, well, it's, it's actually close to average to begin with. Then it increases and it becomes warm or very warm for time. There are signs of a dip there towards the end, but even so, it's, they, most of the ensemble runs again are still remaining above that thick black line, which is the 30 year average. Rainfall, well, there are more spikes shown than on the London plot, but not that many at all. So I think the key thing here is the, the number of rain spikes decreases from about the 11th onwards. So it's suggesting, it's, if anything, the risk of rain will be reducing. Perhaps towards the very end, by the 18th, 19th, the 20th of June, there's maybe a slight uptick there again, but all in all, it's not a particularly wet picture. Maximum temperatures from the ensemble. This is quite an interesting chart for London. The dark oranges show computer model runs in the ensemble, which are going for between 21 and 30 Celsius. Each column summarizes one time slot from each day. So this is shown for the next 16 days. The dark oranges are dominant. They really are. There's a strong signal there for temperatures to be average or above average at the two meter level for the entire 16 day period. In fact, as we head towards the end there, there are one or two reds appearing. Those are computer model runs in the ensemble going for 30 Celsius or over. They are in a very small minority, but I'll come back to that just in a moment. Looking at the same uh, chart for Glasgow, it's mainly light oranges to begin with, but then even, even in the northwest of the UK, even up in Glasgow, we see an increase in the dark oranges. So a significant number of model runs going for over 21 Celsius. So relatively warm in the north as well. Not as warm as in the south, but pretty decent, I would say, if this is correct. I said that one or two of the ensemble runs were going for really, really hot conditions over 30 Celsius for ones which were highlighted by uh, the red color in the columns. This is the extreme. It's a, it's an outlier, but it's the one of the GEFS uh, perturbations for, and it's shown forecast maximums for Wednesday, the 16th of June. I don't know whether it's easy to see there, but in the London area, it's going for 36 Celsius. Sensationally hot, if it was correct, but as I say, it's an extreme outlier. Most of the runs in the ensemble are warm, but nowhere near this. It's just, when you see one or two of these beginning to appear, it does, they are worth keeping an eye on because sometimes they can mark the start of a trend. But at the moment, it's a very, very small minority. I think there's only about two or three runs through the 16 day period, which are out of the 30, which are taking temperatures above 30 Celsius anywhere in the UK. As I say, nonetheless, don't completely discount the scenario. Just think of it as being very unlikely. Pressure uh, data table for six, the 16 days. Again, I've picked York, relatively central location. Mainly yellows and oranges, which are indicating most of those, most of the runs in the yellow block are going to be close to or slightly above the average. The oranges are significantly above the average. So we're seeing a strong signal there for pressure to often be above the, uh, above the June norm 
across most of the UK because it's fairly representative of locations further south and north as well. Perhaps towards the very end, there is a tendency for the number of greens to begin increasing. Those are runs which are showing lower pressure. And just at the very end, there's a little blue in the column, which, which is distinctly lower pressure. Nonetheless, I think the signal there is for high pressure to have a good deal of influence through the next 16 days. Varying amounts of influence, but nonetheless, I think it would probably be the dominant feature of the, uh, of the pressure blocks across the UK. Just to show you the ensemble mean pressure forecast, so this is where all of the, forecast, all of the pressure forecasts in the ensemble model are aggregated and then divided by the, the number of runs. We can see here on Monday the 14th of June, the 1020 isobar line is to the north and the east of the UK, so that is also high pressure, really dominant if this is correct. Jumping forward to Saturday the 19th, the 1020 isobar lines retreated uh, south and west, but uh, and that's really you would expect things to equalize the further ahead you look because the range of options in the ensemble will increase. Nonetheless, again, I think the signal here, given the range of the forecast, is pretty strong. And it is for high pressure to really be continuing to have a lot of influence, even by Saturday the 19th of June. All in all, quite a lot of warm weather around during the next couple of weeks, I think. So to summarise that in a little bit more detail, week one, a good deal of fair early summer weather on offer to begin with, but there will be showers in places. The risk of more prolonged spells of rain increases in the northern half of the UK for a time, and there is some sign that that rain could extend southwards, or at least some of it may for a, for a short time, but it is uncertain, and much of southern and central Britain probably remains mainly dry. By the end of the first week, High pressure is expected to be building back from the southwest, and there will be a good deal of uh, dry weather around as a result, and temperatures should be increasing again. Week two, a fine and warm or even very warm start is likely. A good deal of fine conditions are likely for much of a week, and there is a chance of it becoming hot. That's but. I think the focus really is in warm or very warm weather, but that hot scenario isn't discounted. Towards the very end of the period, it may begin to turn more changeable. That's most likely to be as a result of Atlantic frontal systems moving into the west, the northwest. But there is a low chance of areas of low pressure moving up from the south. That's, that's an alternative scenario, which isn't entirely uh, discounted. So there we have it, that's the summary. I think there's a good deal of fine weather on offer. Temperatures often above the seasonal average. A pretty decent chance of the warmest day of the year so far being recorded in the next two weeks, but it's not certain. So thank you for watching this. I hope you found it useful and enjoyed it. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks now. Bye.